Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to explore how we can fundamentally understand a couple. So here, in the first example at the top, we have a bar of mass m, length l, the center mass is right in the middle, and we're applying a single force f at a distance d away from the center mass. The line of action is distance d away from the center mass, and uh, notice that there's a 90 degree angle between the, the uh, length or the direction of the bar and the direction of the force applied. So we have a torque relative to the center mass point and the torque will be equal to the force times the distance or we can also call it the moment caused by that force is equal to the force times the distance, at least the magnitude of the torque and the magnitude of the moment. The direction of it will be out of the board as we point our fingers in the direction of the force, then curl our, our fingers in the direction from the force, from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation, and then you can see that the torque or the moment will be out of the board in the z direction. Assuming, of course, that the board is the xy plane. But now the key here is that this singular force, well, you can think about it, it's probably going to cause a translational acceleration because there's a net force in the y direction, but it's not acting through the center mass. So you kind of wonder, well, what will be the motion? What will be the, the direction of the acceleration? And of course, it makes sense that the direction of the acceleration will be the same as the direction of the force applied. So you assume that the bar will be accelerating in the positive y direction, even though the force is applied a distance away from center mass. You say, wow, that, that's kind of strange. So that's why it's so hard to understand uh, torques, moments, and the, force, the forces caused by couples. But what we're claiming here is that, oh, and then before I say that, we can also assume that there's going to be an angular acceleration because the force is pushing or pulling at a distance away from the center mass. So we will have both the translation acceleration and a rotational acceleration. But it seems strange when you look at it, well, which way is this going to go? But when you then see the equivalency of the bottom part here, what we're claiming here is that this is exactly the same as this. And so what we have up here in writing, it says a single force acting on an object can be replaced by the same force acting through the center of mass in a couple such that the product of F times D, which is the, the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the distance, which essentially is the torque, is equal to F sub C times L. And so F sub C is, well, the two F sub C's form a couple. There are two forces in opposite directions, equal in magnitude, acting on the, in the same plane, on the same object, a distance L apart from one another. So we can see that we now added a couple to the top drawing and we moved the force to the center mass. Now, how can we say that's the same? Well, let's come over here. Let's look in the y direction. We know that the net force equals the mass times acceleration. So here, when we look at the first drawing, we see that the mass is m, the force is f, so the acceleration should simply be the net force divided by the mass. So in this case, it'll simply force divided by the mass. But if we look at the bottom drawing, we can then see that we have f plus an f sub c in the positive direction and f sub c in the negative direction. So when we add them all up, again, we get f over m. So you see that in the translational motion, there's no difference between this and this, they both will cause an acceleration in the y, positive y direction equal to the ratio of the force over the mass. What about rotational motion? Well, over here we can see that we have a torque created. It's caused by the product of F times D. And so that will cause the object to have an angular acceleration. So we can see that if the torque uh, the torque is I times alpha, so alpha is equal to torque divided by I. So it's going to be the, the torque, F times D, divided by the moment of inertia of a single bar rotating about its center mass, one-third ml squared. So you see, that will be the angular acceleration in the top part. But in the bottom part, we can see that this force goes right to the center mass, so it does not cause any rotational acceleration at all. The rotational acceleration is now caused by the couple. And we know that the definition of the torque caused by a couple is equal to the magnitude of one of the two forces, F sub C, times the distance between the two. And so here we can say that F sub C times L will give you the same torque as F times D. 
and divided by the moment of inertia gives you the same angle of acceleration. So therefore there's no difference in the angle of acceleration of this picture versus that picture. There's no difference in the linear acceleration of this picture versus that picture. So essentially those two are exactly the same. And that is a big deal because now we have a way of relating any one force acting on an object like this into the force move to center mass and an added couple to provide the angle of acceleration. We still don't have a question, we still don't have an answer to the question, well, what if these two forces are not equidistant away from the center mass? Well, we'll tackle that one later, but at least now we have a fundamental way in which we can see that there's a total equivalency between these two pictures. And so a couple simply gives you angular rotational motion and the force going to center mass simply gives you a translational motion. Those two combined is equivalent to the one force acting away from the center mass. And that is how it's done.